Well, hello everybody out there and welcome to another episode of Movie Passion. And yeah, maybe another Halloween special, I don't know what to call it. But yeah, I want to take a closer look at another movie that I would recommend for Halloween. Even though it's not really a typical scary horror movie, it's basically more like a funny splatter movie or a splatter comedy. The movie is called Chillerama. And it's a very interesting movie because it's basically not just a movie, but a series of short films within a movie. So what is this movie all about? So apparently there is this drive-in movie theater that is going out of business because of full HD movies and Blu-rays and you know, home cinema and various different streaming platforms, you know how it goes. So this movie theater is going out of business and for their last night they have this big event called Chillerama, which is like a series of the worst and most offensive movies ever, apparently. And before I talk about the events in the main movie, I first want to talk about all those individual short films. So the first movie is called Whatzilla. So Whatzilla is a movie about this guy who has a very, very low sperm account. Um, to be more specific, he only has always one sperm at a time. So yeah, very, very low. And the doctor is giving him a new medication, a new medicine, which apparently is radioactive and also not approved by the FDA. And this medicine is supposed to strengthen um, this one sperm that he has. And of course, things go terribly wrong because it doesn't really just strengthen this one sperm, it also causes this sperm cell to grow, like really, really grow. And whenever he is aroused, he gets this really intense pain in his testicles, which means that he always has to, you know, jerk off in order to get rid of the pain. And the main problem is, even after jerking off, when the sperm cell is basically out, it continues to grow. So the first one was the size of a little mouse, but it got squashed by the doctor. So no problem right there. But the second one was already a lot bigger and he couldn't really catch it. So it got from the size of a rat to the size of a dog and then later on the size of a person and then later on it by the end of the movie it was as big as the Statue of Liberty. So yeah a really nice movie and I love how poor the effects are in the movie. I mean of course it's intentional but yeah it is very funny. For example there is this one scene where they are all standing around and then all of a sudden uh, the background just starts to disappear and you can only see the sides of the film so you can see okay the background is also just film so really funny and i would say the ending is probably not for everybody the ending might be a little bit gross to some people let's just say Imagine the ending of the first Ghostbusters movie, but instead of marshmallow stuff, you have basically jizz. But yeah, it's a really nice funny movie. Then we have the second one, which is I was a teenage bear wolf. No, no a teenage werebear. Sorry, I was a teenage werebear. So this is... A movie that apparently takes place, I think, somewhere during the 50s, according to the look of things. But I might be wrong. 
I mean, the main character is also wearing a white shirt and a red jacket, you know, just like James Dean. And this is also kind of like a musical in a way. So it's also a little bit like Grease in a way. Um, and they are really nice and catchy tunes. And the movie isn't just about werebears, it's also about, well, let's say homosexuality, because the main character also seems to be kind of confused. He always, he has a nice girlfriend, but he always seems to be distracted whenever there are guys around. And the first song is also about that, you know, she she wants him to not look away and he always sings how he is going to look away. It, it's so incredibly funny. And yeah, then there is this group of troublemakers and as it turns out, they are also werebears. And somewhere during the movie, the main character is getting bitten by one of those werebears which also turns him into a werebear and is giving him like superhuman strength. So in this one scene, the coach basically wants to give him a blowjob or something like that. But then he is crushing his head with his thighs. And yeah, it's really funny how all those little bits and pieces are splattered all over him. And yeah, then eventually during the end of the movie, he also turns into a werebear. But for some reason, he's a good one. So the bad werebears, the original ones, they apparently kill and eat people. I don't know, because they always talk about that other people are basically just snacks. But we never really get to see how they are eating those people. We only see how people are getting killed. And yeah, that's... So he's like a good werebear. And at the end of the movie, the bad werebears are being killed, you know, like in every good movie. So it's a really nice and funny movie. I really enjoyed it, even though I'm usually not that much of a fan uh, of musicals. But, you know, there are exceptions, you know, like South Park and, of course, Nightmare Before Christmas. And now we get to a movie that might be very offensive to some people, but maybe some people don't really have that much of a problem with it. So the third movie is The Diary of Anne Frankenstein. Yeah, so... We all know about, or at least you should know about, the diary of Anne Frank. You know, that little girl that hid from the Nazis and then later on got killed by the Nazis. So this is like a completely different story. As you can tell, it has something to do with Frankenstein. So as we can hear in the movie, apparently Frank is just the short version of Frankenstein. So they had to change their name so that people didn't know who they really were. And Anne had this diary, which was the diary of, uh, I don't know, was it the diary of her grandfather or her uncle or something like that? But apparently some kind of Dr. Frankenstein. And the Nazis were apparently looking for this exact diary. And then... The Nazis come in, they kill everybody, and Hitler gets this diary, which he wants to build a monster, or which he needs in order to build a monster. What I really like about this short film is the fact that they used an old German cast for all those characters, except Hitler. And yeah, they are also all speaking German, and I really like that. Not only because I'm from Germany, but mainly because usually when actors that don't really speak German try to learn a few lines of German for specific movies, it usually doesn't really end well. It's usually always very, very cringy because, yeah, for some reason, people just can't speak German. 
and I'm pretty sure that I don't really speak perfectly English, uh, perfect English. And yeah, but it just shows every time. And it's always very cringy for me when an American actor is trying to speak German. So I really like the fact that they used German actors for all those roles, except Hitler. And, you know, Hitler, he doesn't really speak German. I mean, there are some lines that are German, but for the most part, he's just talking gibberish, which is probably something that they did on purpose because, you know, the real life Hitler was also just speaking or talking a lot of stupid nonsense that really didn't make any sense. Um, but yeah, he is using the diary and a lot of body parts from, I assume, various different Jews that the Nazis killed to build some kind of a monster, you know, just like Frankenstein. And I mean, I talk about uh, Dr. Frankenstein. So, yeah, he's building this monster, which is like a really big, muscular Jew for some reason. And Hitler decides to call this monster Meshugana. And yeah, he basically wants this monster to do a lot of evil things and help him to win the war. But yeah, this monster doesn't really want to do it. It's not an evil monster, just like the original monster of Frankenstein wasn't really evil. It was just misunderstood. So the monster decides to basically kill the Nazis, which is a really nice and interesting thing. There is also this one scene where this Nazi is trying to take over this monster, but then there is this fighting scene and the, the actor is being replaced by just some weird puppet hanging, <laughs> hanging there. And then uh, he is smashing the guy through the table and for this stunt, they replaced the actor with a black actor. So with like a black stunt double. Also kind of funny. Um, and yeah, then the monster, of course, wants to kill Hitler. But Hitler is running away and he is running out of the laboratory into his office. But then the monster realizes, okay, this is just a movie set. So he doesn't need to go through the door. He can just walk around that fake wall. It's just very, very funny. And yeah, I, I really like this one, especially because of the German cast. It, it was a nice change. And then... Let's talk about the fourth movie, which is just like a very, very short thing because then this movie is getting interrupted by the events of the main film or the main movie. So um, it's basically just a montage of various different people taking a dump, basically. So, yeah, it's there is feces everywhere it's a movie about feces there you have it so now let's talk about the main events or the things that happen in the main movie so there is this one guy who is apparently an assistant of this drive-in movie theater and he decided to just basically open up the grave of his dead wife and it is very very obvious that they didn't really have a nice and loving relationship so he wants to have sex with his dead wife I don't know why I don't know what he I don't know it's just the way it is so apparently he also wants to do a lot of things that she never really wanted to do but then for some reason she comes back to life and she's biting off parts of his, you know, his private parts, basically. And 
it is never really explained how or why she comes back to life. But apparently it has something to do with this weird blue slimy gooey stuff which is apparently spreading this let's call it disease. So he is going back to the movie theater and then he decides to I don't know jerk off or whatever in one of the uh, storerooms and then he's using this I don't know, is it oil or butter or something like this as some form of lubrication? And this is how this butter becomes contaminated. Is, is that the word? Contaminated, I think that's the word. And yeah, then this stuff is being poured over popcorn and this is how this disease spreads through all the guests in this drive-in movie theater and they apparently all turn into horny zombies apparently i don't know why they have to be horny but you know that's apparently the way it is and then yeah the chaos just starts to unfold and there is this really i don't know if you can call it a massacre it's like a mix between a massacre and a mass orgy of some sort and yeah it's it's really interesting but also to a certain degree really really gross and then the main actors of the movie they just have to find a way to survive so what else can I talk about well there is of course the fact that this drive-in movie theater is called Kaufman drive-in which is apparently an homage to none other than Lloyd Kaufman, you know, one of the founders of trauma films. And yeah, it really shows there is kind of like a trauma feeling to this whole chillerama thing and to all those movies. They are gross, they are funny, they are over the top. Yeah, it's it is a movie that could have also been released on trauma films so yeah it's a really nice funny movie if you like um, splatter comedies i definitely highly recommend this movie and yeah that's it i hope i haven't forgotten anything but yeah i would say that's pretty much it please feel free to like and subscribe if you like this movie if you want, I have a playlist on my channel with more episodes of movie passion movie reviews. So I'm doing a lot of movie reviews and there are definitely more to come. I also have various different other videos, you know, watch reviews or movies or videos about mini discs, all different kinds of things. Just browse around. I'm pretty sure you will find something that you'll like. And yeah, that's it. And thanks for watching. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.